Greetings War Thunderers, this is Longshot with another Analyze This video, and this one features the Fogger Wolf 190A4 in Arcade. In this series I analyze replays sent to me by viewers, with particular emphasis on events which are hard to understand, or which go wrong despite the player's best efforts. In doing so I hope to help people learn from their mistakes and improve on their flying, and not only the player who submits the replay, but anyone else who watches the video. This particular replay was submitted by Afterburner, who is learning to master the Fogger Wolf 190A4 in Arcade, and posed a number of interesting questions. Before I get to those, let's take a brief look at his flying in the start of the battle. He's reached bomber spawn altitude unopposed, there's no enemy, enemy fighters up here, so he's clear to take out this SB2M that's trying simply to climb above him. Of course the SB2M did not stand a chance, after Burner makes no mistake with a simple helicopter attack from underneath. But now he's very low on speed, and instead of turning, the plane wants to float in the air. It takes some time before he's able to simply to level off and accelerate toward that Wellington. Instead of turning horizontally, he should have used rudder to push the nose down into a shallow dive. That way the plane would have quickly regained its speed and maneuverability. And it would have been crucial had there been any enemy fighters around. You don't want to be caught at low speed like that in this plane. OK, approaching the Wellington, and yes, this is a simple swing of the club to dispatch a hapless seal. Right now that the formalities are out of the way, we can get into the more interesting parts of the battle. And in this turn, after Burner does indeed use the rudder in a flat turn, it's far more efficient in, a, in an A4 than elevators alone. In fact, the rudder is much stronger now than I remember it being on this plane, but then again, I haven't really flown it for quite a while. Anyway, Afterburner's spotted a Hurricane 2B that's climbed, and approaching to engage him. I'll pause the video, as this section relates to the first of his questions. I'm trying to do a climbing spiral, but it gets much too steep. This happens to me a lot. Should I let go of the elevator from time to time, or is there something else I'm doing wrong? I've been watching your tutorial over and over, but still I'm not able to get it right, especially when looking at the enemy. OK, firstly, let's see what happens here. He's already lifted into a climb to get above the Hurricane, who is still closing in. He rolls a bit too far, corrects, and starts a climbing spiral. Now I've paused it here because I don't think the climbing spiral was the right move in this situation. So here's how I would have gone about it. Approaching the engagement after Burner's 190 was doing around 440 km an hour, whereas the Hurricane was a fair bit slower, at around 280 km an hour. Now of course after Burner couldn't know for sure what speed the other plane was travelling at, but the Cane's a fairly slow plane at the best of times, and has just been climbing, so logic says it'll be slow. So the first thing I'd be looking to do is drop into a head-on and open fire from a long range, preferably around 1.5 km, aiming a bit above the target to allow for gravity, and with my convergence set to at least 600 metres. The 190 has all of the advantages in a long range head-on, with far superior weapons, a lot of armour, and it's travelling faster which means it can escape if it needs to. To use a boxing analogy, you should try to immediately land a knockout blow with this plane. By contrast, going into a climbing spiral first is a counter-puncher's move. You're letting the other guy take a first swing at you, and then looking to strike if he overextends. And that approach doesn't suit the 190A4. It can fill the sky around the enemy with tons of 20mm shells, with little risk of taking damage in return, so that's exactly what you should do. OK, let's say you've closed to around 1km or so in the head-on, and the Hurricane's still alive. You have plenty of options, I'll go through two of them. Firstly, you can persevere with the head-on, rolling out of the way if the target's still alive at 500 metres or so, and then extending out of range well before it has a chance to turn and follow. A lot of people fly the 190A4 that way for good reason. It's simple and it works. This plane is a bit of a bully, so don't be afraid to throw your weight around. And here's the second option. If you don't want to take the risk of a closer head-on, use that speed and pull sharply straight upwards at 1km or so, and keep a close eye on what your opponent does. If the Hurricane tries to follow, remember we know it's slow, it's highly doubtful he'll get anywhere near close enough to get a firing solution. You can simply wait for him to stall, or give up, give up the chase and then hammer head over into a diving attack. But if he somehow has more energy than you expect and you're afraid he might get guns on you, only then should you consider switching to a climbing spiral. But otherwise you should keep it as simple as possible. OK, let's go back to the action. The camera rapidly flicks back and forward, and then we're not looking at the enemy, but at the 190 as it goes too steep and switches to an Immelman. After Benner rolls out and starts another Immelman. 
This is not a manoeuvre that the 190 can sustain for any length of time, so it's a good thing the Hurricane has already stalled out. And now, he has eyes on him again after Burn is able to swoop down in a diving attack and get the kill. So you could say that all's well that ends well, but in truth, that was a bit of a mess. In particular, there were two problems that against a more powerful enemy could have seen after Burner shot down. Firstly, and I'll just show it again, he struggled with the climbing spiral and ended up switching to a vertical scissors. The last thing you want is to be fighting to control your plane when an enemy might be helicoptering up to shoot your wings off, and because he was struggling with his plane, he completely lost sight of the enemy for several vital seconds at a time when he needed to be watching the target closely. The only way to improve on these errors is through practice. Fortunately, you can face plenty of AI opponents in War Thunder, either through custom battles, as I'm doing here, or the test flight mission editor. You can obviously practice manoeuvres in a normal test flight, but it's much better to have enemies gunning for you, as that gets you used to controlling the plane at the same time as watching the target. OK, I have baited a few of those drones, so into the climbing spiral. There's quite a few ways to perform this manoeuvre, but the one I use is to continually hold the rudder and the up elevator, never releasing either of them, and using the roll keys to adjust the angle of the plane. If I start climbing too steeply, I'll let it roll further over into the turn, and that's very important in a 190, as it also keeps the plane fast. And most importantly, never let the plane roll over so far that the cockpit is pointing downwards. You should also deploy combat flaps with this plane to provide additional lift for the wings, otherwise your spiral will be too shallow and not much different from a horizontal turn. And having said all that, these drones are ripe for the picking. OK. I'll just zoom climb for a second and see where the enemies are. Right, I'll get above them and start a climb, climbing spiral to the right this time. The advantage of this manoeuvre is that it's completely controlled via the keyboard. I never have to use the mouse to adjust the plane's direction at all, and I can continually keep looking at the enemy planes while I turn. Note that I'm not using the C key for that, as long as you have either rudder or elevator key pressed, and I'm using both, mouse aim is disabled and you're free to look around as much as you like. And when you release those keys, mouse aim will kick in and make the plane fly toward where you have the cursor, unlike the C key, which will snap the cursor back to the plane's heading when you release it. So I really recommend spending some time doing this kind of thing until it's comfortable, and you can perform the manoeuvre as I've done here without having to think too hard about what you're doing. You should also practice making rudder hammerhead turns to transition into a dive. That's the best way to exit the climbing spiral and turn defence into attack. OK, let's move on. Afterburner spots a climbing Tiffy, and he is straight into a diving attack. The Tiffy lacks the energy to meet him head on, so that's a straightforward boom and zoom. That's much more like it, simple and aggressive. But now he continues the dive without checking his surroundings, and this I do not like. If you're going to dive right down to the deck, you want to be sure it's the right thing to do. If there's enemies higher up, you're better off keeping your altitude advantage and dealing with them first, and of course you won't know that if you don't look around before you dive. I think after Bernard just saw that red A5M4 and made a spur of the moment decision to continue the, the attack, but it was never a promising target, both because of its altitude and the fact that it was isolated with several blue planes already engaging it. The odds of it being shot down before he even reached it were just too high, and that's exactly what happened. So the result is a loss of time, as Afterburner has to zoom climb and recover his altitude and head back towards where the majority of the enemies are. And in saying all of that, I've answered his next question about this part of the battle. Kind of a dull phase in the game, could I have improved my target selection? It's so important with a boom and zoomer to think before you dive. If all the enemies are at low altitude, then consider whether your dive will give you several promising targets. If there's just one target and it's three kilometres away when you start your dive, and it's already under attack, the odds of getting a kill on that uh, dive are pretty low. OK, after Burner's into a diving attack on a P400, but it too is diving and joining a massive kill train that's chasing a friendly Spitfire. And I'll pause for a second. If you dive at someone, and they also dive, it's very easy to be sucked down into an altitude lower than you prefer to go, and also to end up flying in a direction that takes you into a dangerous situation. You should make sure that you're flying where you want to fly. Don't let the desire for a kill cloud your judgement and allow an enemy to dictate your flight path. So that said, let's look at the situation here. We're diving very quickly onto a low and slow kill train with a ton of potential targets. In particular, Afterburner is looking to attack the group directly following the Doom Spitfire. 
There's certainly a lot of targets there, but the chances are they'll be swirling around as they try to follow the spit, and they're all quite close together, which will make it hard to get a shot at more than one target. Personally, I'd have looked instead at the second group. They're not close enough to engage the spit, so there's more chance they'll fly in a nice straight line. And it should also give me the option of continuing my attack onto another plane in the first group before I look to extend away, hence giving me the possibility of multiple kills in the one pass. I will not, however, choose the hurricane. Right now it's flying toward the Spitfire, but it's too far away. The odds are that the Spit will be shot down and the cane will change course. And it's too isolated, and I want multiple kills here. The cane offers me just one. OK, I'm going to take this step by step. We're screaming down at over 800 kilometers an hour, but I'd be surprised if any of those planes are even doing half that speed. Chances are they're 300 kilometers an hour or slower. So if we engage at this speed, we'll close in so fast that it'll make it very difficult to hit a target if it dodges, or to get shots on multiple targets. But on the other hand, that speed will enable us to rapidly extend away towards safety after the attack. But there's a good chance we'll only get one kill, if that, because of the speed differential. As we're close to the fighter spawn and there's a lot of enemies around, I would probably have attacked at high speed as Afterburner's doing, and that's because I tend to play conservatively. A really aggressive pilot would have cut the throttle to zero and extended flaps in the dive to slow the plane down to around 650 km an hour. Still fast enough to get away after the attack, but slow enough to be able to aim accurately and potentially pick off several planes. He engages the spit, misses, switches to the Kai-43 and takes him out. OK, decision time. There's a bunch of targets ahead, but they're dodging around and our speed is way too fast to hope for a clean shot. In addition, we've just passed the Cannon Chaika, it's now behind us, we're about to overshoot the Spitfire, and we'll probably overshoot the Yak-7B within a couple of seconds, putting three dangerous planes on our six. And if that wasn't enough, look where this attack is taking us, straight over the enemy airfield, with its AAA defences, and that's what I meant earlier about not letting the enemy dictate where you fly your plane. At this point I would have hit WEP and slowly pulled to the right, extending away from the airfield rather than flying over it, and getting away from this group of enemies as fast as I could. To me, this attack is done and dusted, and it's now time to think about preserving my plane. But these are decisions you have to make based on experience. You can't stop and ponder all the variables in the middle of an attack, as I have the luxury of doing here. After Burner presses on, can't get a clean shot, then sees another Spitfire in the distance. That Spit doesn't seem to have noticed him, and might in fact be landing for repairs. Ignoring the tracer flashing around him, After Burner drops the Spit. And hopefully I've answered after Bernard's question, could I have made better use of the kill train, and also, how did I end up with those guys following me? And speaking of chasers, there are three. The P400, the 109, and the Yak-7, though after Bernard's leaving them all behind, and the Yak soon gives up the chase. Which brings me to the next question. Once they followed me, what would you have done different to get away from them? Well, I'd have simply continued to extend away, as the borders on this map are very wide, and I'd have slowly started to climb while keeping my speed high enough to keep them at a safe distance. Speed is my only asset here. I can't turn fight those planes and I haven't an energy advantage yet. That'll allow me to stall fight or boom and zoom them. I would not have done this. Not yet, anyway. And if I did turn to face them, it would have been much more gradual to keep my speed as high as I could. I get that after Ben is trying to force a head-on, which is one of the strengths of the A4, but the enemies were only two kilometres away when he began the turn, which wasn't quite enough. He has too little time to line up a proper shot, and ends up having to snap roll, and once again he's running with chasers on his tail. And now they're a lot closer than they were, as that hard turn followed by the snap roll have cost Afterburner a lot of speed, though he's still quick enough to get away from them. But look where he's flying, straight back toward the enemy airfield, which would also take him straight under their fighter spawn. There was no need for this at all. He could have easily flown more to the left and avoided the airfield altogether. As it is, he's heading into a storm of flak and tries to shoot his way through, which doesn't work for long. But I'd like to thank Afterburner for submitting the replay and asking such detailed questions. It certainly made it easy for me to analyse this game and hopefully provide helpful advice. I'd also like to thank him for his generous support on Patreon, which is a huge encouragement to me and really does give me incentive to keep working on these videos. If you'd like to submit replays for the Analyze This series, you can do so by sending an email to iamlongshot with a 5 at gmail.com. Next up, I was going to make a stock survival vid on the J7W1, but I've decided to work on another Analyze This video first, looking at the P51D20. But that's all for this video. Until my next one, good hunting, and I will see you in the skies.